autoclaved aerated concrete, aerated cellular concrete, and autoclaved lightweight concrete. This precast, porous, foam concrete building material goes by many different names. Its main ingredients are cement, which is a mixture of silicates and oxides, lime, which is calcium oxide and or calcium hydroxide, gypsum anhydrite, which is anhydrous calcium sulfate, finely ground sand or silicon dioxide, or fly ash, aluminum powder, and water. Calcium oxide reacts with water in an exothermic reaction to form calcium hydroxide and 65.2 kilojoules per mole. Calcium hydroxide reacts with aluminum powder and water to generate hydrogen gas. This gas causes the mixture to expand like bread dough. Finally, silicon reacts with calcium hydroxide to form tobamorite or hydrated calcium silicate. AAC products are cured under heat and pressure in an autoclave. Steam is fed into the autoclave at a high pressure of 800 kilopascals and a temperature of 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Steam curing allows the concrete block to retain its porous form and harden in just 8 to 12 hours. Normal air curing can shrink materials and take much longer. Aerated concrete is a very versatile product that can be formed into solid blocks, cord blocks and U-blocks. They can also be formed into floor and wall panels, curved or straight partition panels, exterior wall panels, lintels and cladding panels. Installation is very similar to traditional masonry construction. Cured blocks or panels of aerated concrete are joined with thin bed mortar. Hebel, one of the biggest manufacturers of AEC, sent me these samples for an unpaid, unbiased review. Aerated concrete has millions of small air pores. In fact, it is 80% air. It is five times lighter than traditional concrete and it has a very low density of 300 kg per meter cube or 20 pounds per cubic foot. Its weight reduces transportation and labor costs and decreases the assembly time on site. AAC doesn't compress, decay or lose its shape over time. It has excellent dimensional stability despite its porous nature. It is also light enough to float in water. Air is a poor conductor so the closed cellular structure and high thermal mass of AAC make it an excellent insulator. An 8-inch thick AAC wall performs like a 2x6 wood stud frame wall with R20 fiberglass bat insulation or an 8-inch CMU block wall with R8.6 rigid insulation. Aerated concrete can provide up to 35% energy savings in both hot and cold climates. However, it may not provide all the insulation you need to comply with building codes, so additional continuous insulation may need to be added to the exterior of a building. Because it is so lightweight, its strength is a sixth to a third that of traditional concrete blocks and it has a lower thermal mass. It is still strong enough to be used on floors and roofs and walls. It has an allowable shear stress of 8 to 22 psi and compressive strength of 300 to 900 psi. Conventional concrete has a stress shear of 40 psi and compressive strength of 1500 psi. The edges of AAC are also quite brittle, so it requires special care during handling and transporting to avoid breakage. AAC has an excellent fire rating as expected from a cementitious product. It can withstand fire exposure for up to 4 hours without charring or losing its structural integrity. It doesn't emit any toxic fumes even under intense heat. It makes me wonder why we are still constructing wooden stick-built homes in fire-prone areas like California. To measure the spread of heat, I bought this Floor One thermal imaging camera on Amazon. I'll link it in the description below. It plugs into your Android or your iPhone and allows you to measure the temperature of surrounding surfaces. Even when the hottest part of the block was over 150 degrees Fahrenheit, the area around it was cool to touch. Since aerated concrete has a porous structure and high surface mass, it is a great acoustic insulation and soundproofing material. It can dampen mechanical energy and vibration and reduce sound transmission from the exterior to the interior 
and room to room. It has an STC rating of 40 for a 4 inch thickness and 45 for an 8 inch thickness. Hebel sound barriers can be used along roads, freeways and rails to reduce noise levels. They can even be routed with custom designs. When aerated concrete comes in contact with water, the tiny pores are immediately filled and the surface is discolored. Since it is vapor open, it dries out pretty quickly and water doesn't pass through the brick, reducing possibility of condensation inside the wall. Unlike conventional concrete, this can't be used as a finish since it is porous. It must be covered with another finish like thin bricks, stucco, stone, metal, wood cement or vinyl. If aerated concrete is used in basements, the outer face must be coated with a thick waterproofing material because soil can break down the surface pretty quickly. It is not organic and it's not a food source which makes it termite, mildew and mold resistant. AAC buildings have been successful in seismically active zones like Japan. The Kobe earthquake that struck in January 1995 measured 7.2 on the Richter scale. Out of 5,578 AAC buildings in Kobe, none were destroyed. They even survived the subsequent fires, while the timber-framed houses around them collapsed and burned. Due to mass production in controlled factory environments, all the blocks are of uniform quality and identical size. This speeds up assembly on job sites and reduces waste. Routing electrical and plumbing lines is also relatively easy. It can be easily cut, drilled or grooved with manual or power tools. One of the drawbacks is the learning curve associated with using AAC. Masons who are used to traditional concrete have pushed back on switching to aerated concrete. Also, while you can screw and nail into these AAC blocks, the attachment is just not as strong. Screws can strip out and nails can twist, so it's recommended to use plastic anchors. Hebel has designed special large-headed square shank cut nails with better holding power. Aerated concrete is considered to be environmentally friendly even though the autoclaving process requires significant amounts of energy and water. It is recyclable, non-toxic, long-lasting, and it has a lower embodied carbon level compared to traditional concrete. We have to weigh the pros and cons when using concrete. Yes, cement can be destructive to the environment, but concrete structures are long-lasting. They can reduce energy consumption and they can withstand natural disasters. Aerated concrete is actually pretty popular in Europe and Asia, but it has struggled to gain popularity in North America because it had to compete with cheap stick building. However, the spike in lumber prices, floods, hurricanes, forest fires, and termite damage is causing the industry to finally look for better alternatives like AAC. Hebel opened up a factory in the US in the 90s, but they had to shut it down and move to Mexico where labor and operation costs are lower. Fortunately, they are planning on moving back to the States soon, which will reduce transportation costs of the material. I would love to see aerated concrete gain popularity in North America, not just as highway partitions, but as a building material for homes. Let me know what you think about this product in the comments below. And also let me know if you think I should make a dedicated video on this awesome Floor One thermal imaging camera. Uh, I'll link my Patreon page if you can support me, I'd really appreciate it. A big thank you to everyone already supporting me. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See ya.